cool. So, hi, uh, my name is Emily, uh, but most people on the internet know me as the Code Pixie or just Pixie. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about networking today and how it's not just for extroverts anymore. Um, a little background about myself. I come from a non-traditional tech background. Um, I spent about a decade working in the coffee industry and ended up managing a cafe for a few years. Then I dabbled in office work doing e-commerce, customer service, uh, office admin, office management. And I'm happy to announce that I just recently got my dream job as a developer at Shopify. And I owe it all to networking. In fact, in my job search, every single interview that I had was a result of networking. I didn't get a single interview from a cold job application. I'm not saying that that can't or doesn't happen for people, but it definitely didn't happen for me. Networking was the thing that gave me a leg up in my job search and helped me get to where I wanted to be. So if you are a dev who's currently looking for work, and especially if you're looking for your first role in tech, this talk is for you. I started studying web development and programming back in 2018 on platforms like FreeCodeCamp and Udemy, and I never looked back. I enrolled in Flatiron School in mid-2019, and I graduated this past March. So I pretty much started my job search at the worst possible time to start a job search. I knew that I needed to do things differently at a time when it seemed like most people were losing their jobs, companies were going through hiring freezes and layoffs, or just shutting their doors entirely. Um, and fortunately for me, I am a natural extrovert. Um, networking came really easily and naturally to me and was fun. But as I went through my job search process and talked about my job search techniques with friends and peers and other members of my cohort, I realized that networking is actually really, really intimidating for so many people. So that's where I got the idea for this talk from, uh, because if there has, there's never been a better time for introverts to start networking, and I will tell you why. Back in the before times, before this whole worldwide pandemic health crisis thing, the main ways that you would network with other people in your industry were by going to meetups, meeting people at conferences, having networking meetings over coffee, and generally needing to talk to people you didn't know verbally face to face the first time you met them. And for someone like me, that stuff is really easy. I love meeting and talking to new people all the time. But for my more introverted friends and people with social anxiety, those kinds of meetings and events are absolutely terrifying. And the benefit of everything going digital and going virtual is that now pretty much every event is held remotely. We're all hanging out on Twitter and social media a lot more, and the main ways we're communicating with people are asynchronous text-based mediums. So you no longer have to walk up to someone that you've never met before and introduce yourself cold and hope that you don't accidentally put your foot in your mouth or generally just get so nervous that you forget how to speak. So we now have this beautiful luxury of time and editing that we can take advantage of. We can introduce ourselves to people via email or direct message on social media, and we can take the time to craft a really thoughtful message that best represents ourselves. Think of this as the cover letter 2.0, the next generation of <clears throat> your first introduction to the company you want to work for. And two of the main questions that I get from people whenever I talk about networking are, isn't it rude to email or DM someone you don't know? And how do I introduce myself to someone without seeming like I just want to get something from them? So first of all, no, it's not rude, but yes, it can be. It's all about your technique and being empathetic and courteous to the people that you're introducing yourself to. Hopefully we all know that we should never be messaging people the word hi or what's up, especially if we don't know the person we're talking to and it's a professional context. We can and should do better than that. I would say that if someone has their Twitter DMs open, they're active on LinkedIn, or they have their email address publicly available, They've done so under the assumption that people are going to contact them through those channels. So when you first reach out to someone with the hope of having them as a networking contact, you want to make sure you introduce yourself appropriately and let them know why you're contacting them. I did this most often via Twitter DMs uh, because I'm really active there or through LinkedIn connection request messages. Something as simple as, hi, I'm so-and-so and I saw that you work at such and such company in some role. I'd love to talk to you about your experience and your role, since I'm really interested in working there or in doing what you do, is a totally appropriate initial contact message. 
better yet, if your mutual is on Twitter or you've maybe seen this person give a talk before, you can bring up other ways in which you can relate to that person. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what you want to do in the introduction email is introduce yourself and who you are and set an expectation for your interactions with this person. And this goes back to the comment about seeming like you're using someone or just out to get something. Here's the thing. People love to help other people. People love to be seen as experts or thought leaders or just generally appreciate when other people acknowledge their expertise or their experience. We all want to, e to see each other succeed. And if someone doesn't want that, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're not a networking contact you want to have anyway. And something that I should mention is to focus on both the quality and the quantity of your contacts. You want to make meaningful connections, of course, but if you're actively looking for work, I'd suggest to aim to make at least 10 new outreach attempts per week. On average, only about half of those people will ultimately respond to your initial outreach, and that's totally okay. Because you don't want 10 people responding to you, and if they do, you're going to have to space all that out. So it's actually in your uh, benefit that not everyone is necessarily going to get back to you. So once you've done your introduction, you want to make sure that you try to set up a face to face meeting with this person. It can be over zoom or Google meet or Skype or whatever platform you prefer. And I know that this part is really intimidating. But the best way to make a real connection with someone and represent yourself most accurately is going to be through a real conversation. There's a lot that can be lost in text tone can't be inferred and there's so many subtleties to people that only you can get by talking to them for real. I typically would wait until there had been at least one or two back and forth messages with a person that I was trying to connect with, and then I'd ask if they had some time in the next week or so for a 15 minute call. Again, you want to make sure that you're setting expectations for your interactions with the people you're networking with. We're all really busy, especially right now, so it's good to give them a brief time estimate. And almost every single networking call that I've had has gone well beyond the 15 minute mark, but it at least gives the person you're talking to an out if they genuinely have other things they need to do or if they're just not interested in having a long conversation. You wanna make sure that you're being considerate of their time. You also want to tell them why you want to chat with them. So for me, most often I framed it as either being curious to find out more about the company they worked for or about being interested in their specific role. If you're really into, let's say, accessibility, for example, and there's an accessibility expert at some company that does really awesome work and you want to talk about what they do every day, you can tell them that. And if you just really want to work for such and such company and you want to know more about what it's like to work there, you can tell them that too. If they don't have time for a call, you can always ask if they're willing to chat about the same topic via messaging or email, but I highly, highly, highly recommend trying to get on a call with them. Once you've made your introductions and you've set up a call with the person you're connecting with, you wanna make sure that you ask the right questions once you get to speak with them face to face. You also want to keep the conversation relatively casual and fun. This should be enjoyable, an enjoyable conversation for both participants. So it's totally fine to start out by just introducing yourself to each other, providing a little background and generally making small talk. Hopefully once you've gotten through this semi awkward introduction part of the call, you'll be able to fall into a pretty natural conversation. You should come prepared with, I would say, at least two or three questions you'd like to ask the person you're talking to. The things that I typically asked about were how they felt generally about the company they work for and the work that they do, how they ended up in their current role, and if they had any general advice for someone looking for their first role in tech. Try to ask very open-ended questions and definitely try to make sure you're asking questions about the person you're talking to and about the things that they do. You want, to show, you want to show that you're interested in them and what they have to say and their perspective and not necessarily only there to find out what they can do for you. Remember, this isn't a formal interview. It's just two people who work in the same industry hanging out and chatting. Don't take it too seriously and remember to have fun. So once you've gotten through the process of sending cold outreach messages, you've chatted with this person for at least 15 minutes, you both know a little bit about each other. Hopefully you found out more about their job or their company. The next step is to close by asking for a referral if you decide you're still interested in the company they work for. Generally, I tried to close each call by asking the person that I was talking to if they knew of any open roles at their company that they thought it'd be a fit for and if they would be willing to provide a referral. Here's the thing. 
about asking for a referral that I think most people forget. It's not just a favor to you. The person being referred to the role isn't the only person who benefits from that referral. Most companies have some sort of referral bonus structure in place, and some of them are very generous. If you get hired at the company that you're referred to, the person who referred you is likely looking at a bonus of anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. And hopefully this person has your best interest at heart and won't refer you for a role they don't think you'd be a fit for. I personally was able to get a real interview as a result of every networking call where I asked for a referral. So remember to ask you and your referrer might both be looking at a huge win if you do. Now, hopefully, after you've had a few uh, networking calls, you've made some good connections and gotten a few referrals, you'll end up with a job offer, if not a few job offers. So what happens now? Well, first of all, you definitely want to be sending sincere thank you emails to every single person you met during your search, whether it resulted in an offer or not. Make sure you're expressing your gratitude to the people providing you with referrals and their time. <clears throat> but you've also met all of these people who work at other companies that you're not going to be working for. And even though you won't be working with those people now, most people change jobs every few years. A few years down the line, a good percentage of the people you spoke with could be working at new companies. And you never know when you're going to be looking for work again. There's also something to be said for making friends in your industry. It's wonderful to have a few people who you know who work in the same field and who want to see you succeed. You can ask each other questions and help each other out or just generally bond over something not even tech related and make a new friend. My point here is to not let those connections fizzle out. Keep in touch with people, update them, let them celebrate with you when you finally get that job offer, follow up with each other on social media, keep in touch via LinkedIn or email and just generally stay on each other's radar. It's totally okay and totally natural for some connections and friendships to fizzle out over time, but the ones that don't will be so valuable to your future, both professionally and personally. Something that I want to touch on before I close out is the specific benefit to networking for people who are underrepresented in tech. For myself, I am a woman in tech with a non-traditional background without a computer science degree, so for me, finding a job without prioritizing networking would have been nearly impossible. My resume has been auto-rejected more times than I can count. I put this uh, Twitter thread up a while back, and I don't know if it's large enough that you can see it, so I'll try to uh, drop the link in the chat when I'm done. Um, but I just emphasize the importance of networking specifically for people like me and for people in similar positions. We all know that the pipeline problem is a myth. Tech hiring and tech interview processes are absolutely fundamentally broken. So if you're part of an underrepresented group, I want you to consider networking and internal referrals as your way into that proverbial pipeline. The things about myself that I and many others would consider my best professional qualities can never shine through on a resume or a job application. Having good communication skills, being generally compassionate and empathetic and, cr and the critical thinking skills required to get through an intense software engineering boot camp while holding down a full-time job just cannot be communicated on paper. And I'm sure that there are so many wonderful things about you, whoever you are, that are absolutely essential for your career in tech that can't be seen on your resume either. So by focusing on networking, you allow people who might, you might end up working with to realize that they really wanna work with someone like you. And if they want to work with you, they'll provide you with that referral to hopefully get you there. So in closing, I hope that I've been able to provide some insight into the networking process and some uh, key like actionable takeaways that you can use going forward in your job search now and in the future. You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet as the Code Pixie. So if you're interested in networking with me, your best bet is to at me on Twitter. And if you wanna network and get to know other developers at all skill levels in an open, fun online community that prides itself on being safe and welcoming I've created a special invite link to my Discord community called Code Cafe Online just for this event. The link is capped at 50 uses, but I think we're under 50 people here. So anybody who wants to get in can use the link. And otherwise, I'll hopefully see you around the internet. Thank you so much, Emily. That was awesome. Absolutely. That, that Thank you a, for having me. That was a great talk. And in my Thank you. In my rush to introduce you, I didn't properly introduce you and congratulate you on your new gig. Congratulations. Thank you. That's so Thank cool. You. Thank um, you so much. 
Yeah, and I guess like as people are starting to throw questions into the chat, I guess for me, if you could talk a little bit, I'm like really interested to hear about how this, the advice you just gave, which I, I think a lot of it I thousand percent agree with. Mm. Uh, how did that sort of play into your current role? If you could give us like a TLDR of how that came about. Yeah. So I focus, I am really, really active on Twitter and I actually um, got a little more popular on Twitter than I ever intended. Um, so I have more followers than I ever actually wanted. Um, <laughs> not that I'm, I'm not incredibly, them. incredibly grateful and lucky, but I focused a lot on um, putting out um, tweets about looking for work because that's where I'm most active. So mm. wherever you're most active, make sure that the people that you interact with there know that you're looking for a job because you never know like where that lead is going to come from. Um, and I actually happened to be mutuals with a senior um like an engineering lead at Shopify. And we connected uh, because he saw that I was looking for work. We ended up chatting over Zoom one day. The area that he worked in was really interesting to me. So he provided me with a referral and I heard back maybe two or three days later from a recruiter for an initial phone call and then went through you know the whole interview process there. Nice. Um, and it just I just happened to know somebody who worked for the company that I wanted to work for. And I jumped on it faster than I possibly could. <laughs> yeah. I mean, t a thousand percent that like, I really think what you're talking about in terms of sort of making this personal connection, it like really right. helps you stand out from the pile. And I'll say that, you know, I'm a, I'm a career changer as well. So a lot of what you're talking about is stuff I learned over the past four or five years. So if I had seen this talk, five years ago, I'd probably be well further along my way because you just sort of like consolidated all that knowledge. Right. But yeah. That's the thing that I really want to do for people is like, I think if I had not been in a position to just have access to all of these people who work at really amazing companies and the ease of connecting with them because of the internet, like we're all developers, we're all on the internet all the time. We're all talking to each other. I think that people definitely don't take advantage of that enough because they are afraid of those those issues that come up of like am I being rude am mm -hmm. I being greedy like no you're not like we all want to see each other do the best that we can do and if anybody that you talk to can help you they want to and if they don't then that's not somebody that you should be hanging yeah. out with <laughs> yeah I mean like you said I think you made such a good point about the one, there's this financial incentive for them. Like I know my oh, company yeah. offers Absolutely. a bonus as has everyone I've worked at. So I think that's, that's definitely true. And then also what you said, like if you're putting your contact information online, you're sort of expecting people to reach out. Right. And, right. You know, as a, de as a developer myself, like I can understand and empathize, sympathize with people looking for jobs, whether it's their first one or not, because I've been in that situation. So and of course, like you're saying, the most traction you're getting is from these personal connections. So right. that's what's worked for me. So if I would say, like, I think a lot of people in this community, if someone reaches out and says, hey, I'm looking for a gig, I'm interested in your company or potentially even a specific role, like their inclination is to to help you because beyond just like the personal stuff and like, hey, maybe I just like want to give someone a shot. It's like you said, there's they could just make a couple thousand dollars just for chatting with someone for 15 minutes. Right, exactly. And I think the thing that I think people get, um, can get really in their head about feeling awkward about it. And I think that some of that is really true, genuine anxiety that I totally understand because the <clears throat> anxiety monster in your head lies to you and tells mm -hmm. you that you're being rude or that this person isn't interested in you or that like they don't want to help you. And that's just patently not true and most of the people that you're going to talk to if you make the effort to connect with people um are going to be on your side and going to be willing to do whatever they can to help you out yeah and abs absolutely for the i think the first job is i would say the hardest to get unfortunately oh, absolutely you know like i was in the same boat as you're talking like you're talking about not having this cs degree not having this resume full of like places i've worked and done development so if it wasn't for like the personal stuff and like the soft skills, non-technical, I probably would have never gotten my first job. So 
it's, it's just super important, I think. And the approach you're taking, I think, was really good. So it's great to Absolutely. see that you've landed because I oh, think. Oh, thank you. I'm a, so relieved and overjoyed. Yeah, I've been I've, I've been one of your many followers watching your trajectory online. Thank and it's you. like rooting from you for <laughs> from afar. So like, it's just super great to see great folks from the community doing well. So thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you. Yeah, coming. Thank you for time. having me. Yeah, you're obviously welcome back anytime. So please awesome. feel free to reach out if you want to come back. Thanks. Yeah. And you can maybe do a talk about your first like six months at Shopify and let us know oh, like, yeah. things I wish I knew when I had started or whatever, something like that. That'd be awesome. That's a great idea. Cool. All right. I'm going to switch over to another scene. I'm going to mute you, re mute you, excuse me real quick.